Okay. We should be on, Chloe. Mm -hmm. Have you found us? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet? Oh, there we are. Evening, folks. Saturday night. Saturday night's all right. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> We're living and learning, hey? New times, but anyway, cheers everybody. Um, happy Saturday. I hope it's a happy Saturday for you all. Um, whether you're watching this down in Melbourne or around Victoria or in Sydney where things are getting interesting again. But, um, we won't talk too much about the virus tonight. We'll, um, we'll try and focus on some good old songs. So some requests, re our second request night, and I'm looking at a pretty terrific list of songs. You guys certainly know how to put a list together. And um, the first one we're going to play tonight is a song requested by Chico. Alan, this is for you. Uh, it's a song called The Hat Ned Kelly War. Australia's most famous hats. Um, like a lot of Australian folk songs, this one's a mongrel dog. It's had pieces and come from all over the place. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the first recording of it came from Alec Argus down in Gumley Gumley. Um, Where's Gumley Gumley? Gumley Gumley. Gumley Gumley. I should tell you where we are because I can see already there's someone tuning in who isn't uh, aware of where Millthorpe is. So Millthorpe, we're in the Tablelands. We're 250 kilometres straight west of Sydney, up into the high country. And... Um, Yes, Wiradjuri country, the land of the three rivers for the Aboriginal people. So the three rivers being uh, the Wombul, or as the white fellas would call it, the Macquarie. And then we have the Lachlan, my good old river, um, which is the Kalare and the Murrumbidgee. So it's an enormous bit of the middle of New South Wales. And before we start, we'll acknowledge that uh, uh, the Aboriginal people would thank them for looking after the country as well as they have for as long as they have. And um, yes, it was never ceded, no, no treaty, always was, is and will be Aboriginal land. And we certainly acknowledge the elders of the past, uh, the elders doing such a great job at the moment, and some of the young people, the emerging elders coming through. It's, a, it's an exciting time, I hope, for um, Aboriginal people, in, uh, for the first Australians, let's say. Yeah, the Hatnet Kelly War. Um, Alec Argus from Gumley Gumley gave it to John Meredith and uh, eventually our dear old mate Jack O'Kevins got hold of it and made a new setting with the melody and that's where I remember this one from uh, Woodford, learning it at Woodford from Jacko and um, yes, it's one of those lovely warm-hearted bush songs. A good opening to tonight I hope. <laughs> Good evening to you one and all, good luck to what I say. I've just stepped in amongst you all before I go away. And I've brought with me the relics of the good old days of yore. And I'll sing for you a song about the Hatnet Kelly War. Oh, it was made of rusty iron. The finest ever known, and it was worn in 1880 at the Hotel at Glencoe. And it terrorised the troopers, the minions of the law, when they saw it in the morning mist, the Hatnet Kelly War. Now my name is Larry Doolan, I'm a true Australian man. I was born of Irish parents in the township of Willan. I can sing and dance with any man when I take to the floor. But I curse the day they trampled on the Hatnet Kelly War. Oh, it was made of rusty iron, the finest ever known. And it was born in 1880 at the hotel at Glenron. And it terrorised the troopers who terrorised the poor. Just a relic of a hero, the Hatnet Kelly War. Colours and fine stars. You can search Strathbogie Ranges to Buckdo or Singapore, but you'll never find the equal of the Hatnet Kelly War. Oh, it was 
was made of rusty iron, the finest ever known, and it was worn in 1818 at the Hotel Ackland Rome. And it terrorized the troopers and terrorized the poor. Tis a relic of a hero that hath no Kelly Hall. And if ever I return again, my native home to see, I hope you'll in the old bush way a welcome give to me. With songs about the Kelly gang to cheer me o'er and o'er, and make me want to see again the hat net Kelly wore. Oh, it was made of rusty iron, the finest ever known, and it was worn in 1880 at the hotel at Glenrowan. And it terrified the troopers who terrorized the poor. Tis a relic of a hero that had no Kelly War. It was made of rusty iron, the finest ever known. It was born in 1880 at the Hotel at Glen Rowan. And it terrified the troopers who terrorized the poor. Tis a relic of a hero that had no Kelly War. Hard not to think of Jack O'Kevins when singing that song. I could picture him there at Woodford singing. You know, he used to stack the chairs up and get up high and sing with his accordion. And yeah, that's where we learned that one from Jacko. I think Jacko put the tune on those words because Alec Argus's original tune was a little different, or well, quite different, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, what but, was the one he used to sing in Circular Key? Oh, we're going to do that one a bit later on. Oh. So maybe we'll talk about that. Who was that very one? Who was All that right. very one, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll be revisiting the repertoire of Jack O'Kevins a little bit later on. And, um, boy, what a, what a giant of Australian folk music Jacko was. and We miss him. Uh, the next piece is, was a request from Ian Large. Now, if anyone deserves us to say yes when he requests a song, it's Ian. He's supported and uh, helped us, facilitated lots of our work over the years. Um, I've known Ian for a long, long time. Ian taught me science in year eight. Yeah, what a job trying to <laughs> teach me. <laughs> um, anyway, he's a great mate still. In fact, we had a visit last week. Wasn't it good to see him? Good to see anyone in this virus time. Have a, actually have some personal communication. And uh, Ian requested a song called The Wanderers. Now, this was a poem that we learned from a recording of Carrie Milliner when we first were introduced to um, the, the, the deep tradition of Australian folk music with oh, hours and hours and hours of recordings of Carrie Milliner singing. Um, uh, but she recited this one. She said it as a poem. We didn't know who wrote it or anything. We just liked the poem. And we set it to music and we went looking for the author. Eventually we found the author. He was a, an Englishman who'd come to Tasmania and lived most of his life as a school teacher in Tasmania. And his name was James Hebblethwaite. You go looking for a name for a long while, it's good when you get a good one at the end of it. And, uh, actually, I remember when we first sort of discovered his name and, and put his name on our website and said we'd set one of his poems to music. His family in England, remember, got in touch and uh, perhaps they're still out there. Maybe they're listening tonight, I don't know. This is a piece called The Wanderers. Hope you're all holding tight. We've had some nice autumnal rain here today. Really nice, steady, soaking rain this afternoon. Beautiful, beautiful. Just exactly as it's supposed to be. Rain in the autumn. I can see why this poem appealed to Carrie, actually. They were a family of sleeper cutters. And I think a lot of the imagery in this poem would have run true with her. Joyously, pull up the stakes and go. Pull up 
roll up the stakes and go. As I rode on my eagle hawk, the wide blue deep of air, the wind among the glittering leaves, the flowers so sweet and fair, the thunder of the rude salt waves, the creek soft overflow. All joined in chorus to the words, pull up the stakes and go. Pull up the stakes and go. Here by the tent, my forest skirt, by odour of the earth, by sight and scent of morning smoke, by evening campfire mirth, by deep sea calls and foaming greens, by new stars gleam and glow. My summer trails in antique lands Pull up the stakes and go Pull up the stakes and go James Hebblethwaite, he wrote it in 1899 and we wrote the tune for the poem in 2000 and if you're out there Sam, I don't know if you are, Samantha O'Brien, we've got a couple of requests from Sam tonight, um, just where you're sitting there in that flat, that's where we wrote that tune, I can picture myself with my feet up on the old coffee table right in that tune, so um, yeah, it's funny how things come and go around, anyway, cheers everybody. This request came from a couple of different people. Um, Vic Jeffries mentioned it in passing. Vic's been posting a lot of um, fantastic poetry uh, to Facebook, just reminding us of some of our great works of poetry. Some one of those things that people seem to have a little bit more time for at the moment. I've noticed poetry. There's people just taking that time to revel in some of our great wordsmiths. And he posted this as a poem, and then I got into a bit of a conversation with him and then Bruce Foyer actually requested coincidentally so I hope you're out there Bruce and uh, it's a piece written by Tom Wilson Crosscut Wilson as a Western Australian poet and uh, look it's, it's the kind of piece that could have been written fairly recently actually but um, it's, it's well over a hundred years old now and uh, the tune for this piece of poetry it was written by Bob Rummery. Now, some of you out there will know Bob, Bob's work and, and know exactly how good he is at this kind of thing, uh, hanging a tune off words that you feel like have always been there. Um, what we've decided to do, because we sing so many of Bob's settings, in a couple of weeks we're going to do a whole night of Bob's settings of words and Bob also writes a mean dance tune. So um, we're going to, uh, I really recommend you tune in for that one if you can. When we do do Bob's music, it'll be a, a night to remember. Um, he's a, f a force, he's Bob Brummery. And uh, this is his tune for the poem, A Man Was Killed in the Mine Today. I entered the cage for the number nine. A trucker paused at the brace to say As he left the depths of the gloomy mine He said a man was killed in the mine today Then the 
wind the sang as we rushed below And the plots rushed upward merrily and so to toil Yet it came to me, tis a sorrowful thing to sow Dusty stoves as the rock drills dash at the good grey ore. There's labour and sweat for the company, hopes for a quote in the share list of one point more. There's wealth to grasp, there are dips to pay. And what is a labourer more or less with the din and the clamour? Now who would guess that a man was killed? Roll on, there's a tally to make And the stamps are hungry and I am shod But whose lips could quiver, whose heart could break Well, there's Chris for the mills of the rich man's God well, There's a tin bob wage for the risky ram And a poultry risk if he got past out Tis nothing to worry our heads about he opened the job for a luckier man. A hit is only a shoveler, put it aside. When there's gold to win, such things must be. He gave his pound to the rich man's pride And what is a life? Yet it came to me There may be somebody far away Some soft-eyed woman whose tears would flow Whose cheek would pale If she did but know that a man was killed in the mine Yeah, so his name was Tom Wilson, Tom Crosscut Wilson, and he's a terrific poet well worth a, a bit of an investigate. <laughs> investigate, you can, you'll find his words around the place. And that's not the only one of Tom's pieces that we do. do. Um, Sam, Samantha O'Brien, I mentioned, requested a couple of songs and this is the first one I think that Sam asked for and it's one of ours. Uh, a song we wrote, I'm gonna say, 10 years ago. Yeah, is it ten. Really? Yeah, it is because is it was on, oh, on an album. Was around? Yeah, yeah. Was around. Yeah, it was on an album of ours called A Voice That Was Still um, back in 2010. Um, it was when we first put it out. And it's a song called Six Kids. Now, um, this song was actually inspired by a story that came out of my family. I've got um, uncles and aunts living in South Africa. And my uncles and aunt living um, near the Orange River outside a town called Alawal North. They're in a farm, a very old family farm with a big white house up on top of a, the side of a mountain. And the, the land there is really tough. They have goats on top of the mountain, but they have that front to the river. So they have um, irrigated blocks along the river. And between those two things, that's what keeps the farm going. And they, all their kids are grown up, left home, and they decided they'd bring three of the kids from the orphanage to have a holiday. They thought, why not? We've got all this space. They can come out and play and meet the pigs and meet the goats and, you know, actually get out of the, the place that they're stuck in in town. And that was the plan. And they went through with it. But um, when they got to the orphanage, there was more than three kids. And they couldn't help themselves, as you'll see in the story. They, they had to try and help.
High over the valley, the old white house stands where the road winds to the river and away. And it looks to the town at the edge of its lands while the sun shines on the mountain every day. Let's do what we can, said the old farmer's wife. Winds to the river and away to give three orphan children a break from hard life while the sun shines on the mountain every day. The orphanage stands on a bare patch of ground where the road winds to the river and away. Six kids on the veranda that runs halfway around. While the sun shines on the mountain every day Three children look lively at each passing sound Where the road winds to the river and away Three heads are hanging, looking down at the ground While the sun shines on the mountain every day request Sam it was a pleasure to remember that song and get a chance to play it again it always brings a tear but um, yeah having visited that farm myself a few years ago I can sort of picture it all very well and uh, yeah. a sad story after a, no doubt a happy holiday oh, they had such a good time <laughs> yes. they had a fantastic holiday but at the end of the holiday all six of them came up one at a time and said can I stay can I stay and um, my aunt Marianne said, you know, if it had just been one of them, or maybe even two, I probably would have said yes, but I couldn't have six. <laughs> so she had to say no to all of them. Oh. This next song comes from um, the singing of a bloke called Jack Wright. Uh, he was in Coogee when he gave the song, and this is for Tony. 
um, Tony, Tony Sutter requested this song and I know Tony sings it as well. There are so many different versions of this. Um, Jack Wright's original melody is a cracker. I love singing his tune. Um, when we played in Wonga Willie, Graham Murray used to sing another tune in a minor key. This is the setting that uh, Mike O'Rourke, Michael O'Rourke made of the song. Uh, we could picture this as a sort of a pretty good song for musicians in lockdown time, really. It's called Battler's Ballad. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and Failure to get places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's probably about time we, we've just mentioned exactly what's happening for those who are just stumbling across the Saturday streamings for the first time. Um, it's just a, we get to play. We're playing to camera um, and it's free, but we do encourage, <laughs> gently encourage donations. Um, but please stay and listen, sing, doesn't matter if you intend to pay or if you can't or you can, but if you can contribute a bit or a lot, as I've started to say, a little bit helps a lot, a lot helps enormously. <laughs> but um, really just, and it's, I know so many of you have already contributed today and tonight and the, the simplest way to contribute is, uh, I think we've now made a button within the, the Facebook environment. Like I say, we're still learning about this stuff. I think it's clearly labeled tickets. Tickets. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing our best, folks. But or front page of the front website. page of our website. There's a donate button, and just as good as a donation, or even better in some ways. If you want to buy an album or two, you can pay what you like for an album, or download album, or or hard copy. Um, within our website, you'll mm. also see links to what we're calling the isolation tapes, and we've now got about 34 songs we've, which we've recorded. We just do every few days. We sit down and we think of a song that we feel like singing, and it's turned into a bit of a diary of this time, this strange time where we went from you know hundreds of gigs every year for 30 years to basically watching them all just kind of disappear, like going off the edge of a cliff. And I don't mean it's to sound like a miserable story because we're actually really enjoying, in so many ways, the break, and we're getting to play a lot of music, but we're also you know, we need to work. Um, so it's, I guess it's like an informal subscription model, if you like. We don't really like that, you know, signing you up to pay a certain amount every month or anything, but people have been so generous helping out and we really appreciate it. This is Battler's Ballad, Michael O'Rourke's setting of Battler's Ballad. And um, it's a really interesting tune of Michael's. I love it, I love it, it's a, it's a beauty. Just a lonely bat, you were waiting for a You wished a heaven you had never born. Oh, you ran to dodge a copper, and you came an awful cropper. The skin on both your hands was cut and torn. You were tired and you were weary, lack of sleep made your eyes bleary. The soles of both your shoes had worn right through. And your heart is sore and aching, and your back is fairly breaking, and your coat and shirt and pants are padded too. But it's hey, hey, hobo, you're just a rolling stone. Even though you're stony broke, if you still can crack a joke, you're as good as any king upon his throne. Maybe better. And your muscles need no oil You ran to dodge the headlamp's brilliant glare Oh, you've seen that copper's wood heat You know that it's a good heat You know the tucker's not the best in there Then the engine gives a whistle And you trip on a thistle Get tangled up in signal wires and points And you stumble in the gutter Oh, strike me pink, all the flame and joy But it's hey, hey, oh, bro, you're just a rolling stone but Your pants are wearing thin, if you still can raise a grin You're as good as any king upon his throne Oh, take one, Chloe 
We've got one more for you before we ask our special guests, our weekly special guests. <laughs> I'll have to start calling them something else, won't we? But both the girls have got a poem for you tonight, but we've got one we'd like to do first. This is for Trish. Trish Griffiths asked for this one. It's not a song we'd ever sung, no. funnily enough. Thanks um, for asking this though, Trish. Yeah, Takes yeah. Takes us back to some very lovely sessions. My memory, and I bet a lot of you out there will have the same memory as me, is of Bertie Gibson singing this song. Uh, I bet even just mentioning Bertie's name, and a lot of you have already guessed the song, I'm thinking. That song is my old black Billy, Edward Harrington's words. My old black Billy. Uh, Bertie singing this one. You always knew you'd arrived at a festival if you yep. hear Bertie singing this song. And um, it is a beautiful song, and we wish you all the best out there, Trish. Um, and I, say, I don't know about what what everyone else out there is feeling, but there just seems to be quite a lot of um, kind of hard, hardness, hardship in the air at the moment. People struggling just a wee bit. We've had a fairly difficult week ourselves in some ways, but we're going along all right. I don't know, people are maybe coming to some sort of understanding that this, this old virus thing is going to be a bit of a long haul. Um, but gee, it's nice to get to sing. and. Uh, and, and you can sing too. And you can sing too, yeah, if you know the chorus and you'll pick it up in no time if you don't. And yeah, thanks again for the request, Trish. It's a, a beautiful song. Best mate of all. 
I've carried me swag on the parched paru Where the water is scarce and the houses few On many a track on the great outback Where the heat would drive you silly I've carried me sensible, indispensable old black Billy my old black Billy, my old black Billy. Whether the winds are warm or chilly, I always find when the shadows fall, my old black Billy's the best mate of all. My tramping days at last are o'er, and I drop me swag at the golden door. St. Peter will stare when he sees me there, and he'll say, Poor wandering Willie, come I'll in with your sensible, indispensable old black Billy, my old black Billy. My old black Billy Whether the winds be warm or chilly I always find when the shadows fall My old black Billy's the best mate of all Thank you, Trish, for the request. All right, I think it's time we got the girls in for you. I don't know who's going first. I get the feeling it's Joanna. And Joanna's got a poem for you. And Megan's got one for you as well. Um, I do actually have a sneaking, had a sneaking hint at what we're going to hear. Joanna's certainly going to do one of her own composition, showing a little bit of a, an influence of Dr. Seuss. And uh, she can't go too far wrong with an influence that good. And then we'll have Megan as well. Oh, I can hear them running up now. Yeah, that's Joanna. <laughs> Come on in, Joanna. -y. Ladies and gentlemen, with a poem of her own composition, here's Joanna. We have a dog. Her name is Mo. She sat on the jump of the log. She has a fan. She is a fox. Oh, we have a love our dog called Monk. Thank you, Joanna. Yay! <laughs> She's actually adding a verse about a cat, but I won't, I won't give that away. Thank you. All right, folks. Here's Megan with a poem of, of Bev Stewart's. And I, I, I love this poem. Here, dig it. Hey. Um, I've been, I haven't done this poem in a while, so I have my cheat sheet here. I might not need it, but I'm going to have it anyway because it makes me feel better. It's a sickness that ails me, where common sense fails me. My condition just keeps getting worser. I can't think as I ought, for somehow I've caught the curse of the rhyming versa. By day and by night, there is little respite. It seems this might go on forever, with constant refrains invading my brain and rhymes that are not even clever. When I'm out with my friends, they're sent round the bend by my unstoppable rhyming. And whenever I speak, I sound like some freak. I'd be better with silence and miming. And I must be prepared to take extra care when there are children present. I can come unstuck with words such as, uh, aye, aye, aye. Uh, duck, and not to mention plucking pheasants. Oh, I have such an urge to be rid of this scourge of which I'm so sorely afflicted. But I honestly feel that my fate has been sealed. I've got hooked and now I'm addicted. No relief can I find. I am losing my mind with a head full of rhythm and metre. As the lines they unfold to bore young and old with a load of verbal excreta. To put end to this curse of endless verse, I wish I could turn back the clock. Back to a time when things didn't rhyme. I dream of having rhymer's block. Must I live out my days ending each phrase with words that sound almost the same? 
Well, one thing's for sure, it seems there's no cure. But I found out just where lies the blame. Don't end up like me. Let your thoughts flow free. Don't hang out with poets and reciters. If you want to stay sane and not addle your brain, then stay well clear of these blighters. For no potions or pills can get rid of the ills of a condition that slowly gets worse. No escape can be had once you've got it bad. This curse of the rhyming versa. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. I think. I think. <laughs> it seemed a bit insulting. It did. <laughs> well done, Digger. And Bev Stewart. Well done, Bev. Well, well done, Bev. What a lovely poem. Mm. Um, this is for Carol, this next one. Uh, we like our Ben Hall ballads, our Wedden Mountains bush ranging ballads. In fact, in a couple of weeks, I'm not sure exactly when, we're, we'll probably do a whole show on, on the, the songs and poems and stories of the Wedden Mountains bush rangers. Oh, you have to, don't you? You have to. Out in this part of the world, they, you know, they, just, they just number them. Sing number 73! <laughs> <laughs> and they won't let you go home until you've sung several. I really like this one. It's not one of the... The, the more well-known ones, it's a, a piece called My Name is Ben Hall and uh, we found it in Manifold's Penguin Book of Australian Folk Songs. He, he writes in there, I think he writes something like, sung to the popular tune My Dear Irish Boy. I don't know that, that My Dear Irish Boy has ever been found anywhere but um, it works well for this song. At one point, everybody knew it. Yes, maybe. You could just write the title and they would know. There's a song for Carol, who I'm not going to thank. I'll just say, this is for you, Carol.
now we go back in time a little bit for us. Now we go back to a song off our very first album. Um, our first album was made 25 years ago this year. And, um, and this is a song that was requested off that album. Cheryl, this is for you. Uh, it was a piece I remember very clearly. We were driving back from Tottenham in the middle of New South Wales, heading back to Sydney, and it was snowing at Lake Windermere. Uh, we came through Mudgee down the, the, the fun way, not down the highway, and it was snowing as we drove past. I mean, really snowing too. And um, if you know Windermere Dam or if you've seen other dams like it, you'll know that there's a, often dead trees in the water, sort of ghostly sort of looking water. Mm, Chloe. Pale white gum trunks standing out of the water, grey skies and snow. It was very eerie. Here's a song called White Underwater. Bit of a ghost story. Turn the lights down. Yes. About 25 years ago, we had a studio in Sydney. Oh, well, actually, the, the album was out by now. I think we released it in April, May. Some of the songs on there would be pretty hard for us to sing these days, but I th this one, I think I, I really enjoyed. Be I've enjoyed rehearsing it anyway. Yep, let's see how we go. Of course, I didn't know about banjos then. I do remember playing it on the veranda of the Wombat Pub with Gregor Leary on fiddle once. <laughs> remember that? Yes, I do. You know, we were blown away. He was amazing. He hadn't even heard the song before and he picked it up and he played the most wonderful fiddle. And he finished. And Alan Musgrove was there sitting on the bench. He said into the silence afterwards with us, you know, grinning like fools. He said, yes, that's Greg. He plays well in the bullshit style, he says. <laughs> We didn't know what to think then. I, 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 all I knew is that I was a folky, yes. We had so much to learn. Yeah, he's white underwater. Thanks for the request, Cheryl. The instruments have been misbehaving today. I think it's that autumnal rain that I was talking about. It's a, it's a lot more humid today here than yeah, it has been. Oh, he could 
no more fight the calling When she knew that, that a choice must be made For their love would end with the moon Oh, follow me down when the moon is full Where the trees are white underwater Follow me down where the air is cool And your breath is the mist on the water Again, and that was Cheryl's thought. So thank you. Thanks, I guess Cheryl's also got a copy of the first album, which is a bit of a rarity now. I don't even know if we've got one. I've probably got one hanging around somewhere. Do. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. Another request from Samantha O'Brien now, and um, she's speaking my language when she asks for this song. This is one of my very favourite traditional Australian songs. Um, we also learnt this one from Jacko Kevins. A recording of Jacko singing this song where he magically transforms keys uh, down a semitone. He... It was, yeah, was down or was it up? I think it must have been up. It was up a semitone or up a tone. Each time it came around, it would finish and go up and finish. And he said, Yeah, I've never been able to get out of that. I sing that one in circular key. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he explained it to me as being that he recorded it for the out that particular Trains of Treasure album the day after Declan Affley's wake, yeah. um, Declan's wake, and I, I think um, he was probably still feeling a little somewhere else. Yeah. Anyway, it's a grand song. Ned, Ned McKellisot, um wrote the song. From up on the northern rivers, it's a Lismore song, the Tweed and Lismore Railway. Uh, it's a work song. Uh, it's a bit of a cliche to think of folk music as being largely work song. When in Australia, it, it's actually quite rare, but uh, I think this is an example of a song you'd sing while you were working. Yeah, it's got that crack in it. It does. It really does. Yeah. Some weight behind us. A tweed and this more.
no marbles, no marble, no nothing to play. It came on to rain and we lay on the floor by the side of that railway to tweet and live more mighty far. And it rained with a will The flood nearly covered the whole of Bex Hill Such shift and a camp, sure I never saw before We had on that railway to tweet and live more body For the little sing little I first got a job with me axe in me hand From lopping and chopping I scarcely could stand Me bones ate it ache and me arms they were sore From working like places upon the list More than more than little sing there I next got a job with me horses and trays it was dear boys and so was the maids Till sixpence a day they wouldn't give it no more And they run us to the devil upon the list More that he'd fall a little narrow Sing the devil If one thing was in it, our credit ran high If not then I'm sure that all that might have died People from Queensland came down in a score So you could work on that railway The tweet and live more like he falls in there He was Brady by name Of stature he's small And I'm telling you blame Of stature he's small And of cheek he's galore And he'd sack you for smoking Upon the Lismore That he'd fall in a little Tinderal Well it's about to conclude And to finish my song Mr. McNeely is big, fat, and strong. Old, old Andy Morgan, he's a man to the core. But Carol himself, he's a rotten old poor lad. For the little Errol, sing Errol, Harley. For the little Errol, sing Errol, Harley. Tweed and Lismore. Another one Huge. from Jacko Kevin's voice in, in that one is what I hear. Ah, uh, another lovely request. I like these request nights. They're really good fun. Um, a song that we had not thought of singing again for a little while. But Lonnie asked for this one. I hope you're out there listening, Lonnie, or if you're catching it up. It's a nice thing about this is you don't actually have to watch it live. It all just goes up later and you can see it. But I guess if you are watching on here, I guess it's morning, good morning in England. And um, this is a song from Simon MacDonald, one of the great tradition bearers of Australia's past. Simon died the year I was born. He died in 1969. Um, and he came, well, he lived a lot of his life in Creswick in Victoria. He was a, a very good fiddle player, could play for the dancers. He sang a lot of songs, some songs that are quite famous, The Cockies Bungaree. Um, yeah, he has a wonderful repertoire. And, um, 
This is a song he sang. A lot of his songs came from his dad. And um, Norm O'Connor, I believe, collected most of the work from, um, from Simon. He used to enjoy a beer as well. He was a, he was a bush worker. Um, he did, you know, could do just about anything but, and then did everything around the bush. Um, and enjoyed a beer. There's some lovely recordings of him being collected in the pub and fights starting out around him and they just shift the tape recorder in again at the end of the next room and you Norm, the door shut and yeah. the noise gets softer. Yeah, the nice thing is that the, the, you sort of hear the fight disappear in the background and the recorder keeps going and then someone, one of the people records, oh, this happened last week too, he said. There are wonderful stories that come with Simon. But this is one he learned from his dad called The Lost Sailor. We might call an old country ballad. As in from the old country. Like old country. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for the request, Lonnie. I hope you're doing okay over there. Um, it is strange times, there's no doubt about it, but we can stick together as much as we can. <clears throat> it was early. worth a look and a listen to Simon you'll find some recordings of Simon in the in the National Library and, and in various old records vinyl that are around where this was that folk songs of Southeast Australia there's no oh, anyway the title. yeah have a look yeah. around Simon McDonald um, all right Alan Chick Chico uh, requested two songs this week and this is the second of the songs um, the words for this song were written in 1917 in Flanders uh, and they were written by a man by the name of Dan Sheehan, Paddy Sheehan. Paddy had been born in, in Ireland but he was uh, came to Australia as quite a young man and 
was a sleeper cutter in northern Queensland, cutting sleepers up there when, when the Great War, <laughs> the Great War, the war to end all wars broke out. Um, and he was one of those first enlistees. He joined up, and he'd, he'd been a published writer of note be before the war. In 1917, he wrote this piece. He sent it home in the hope that it would be published, but the War Precautions Act was in full swing and uh, the, it was actually squashed by the National Censor. Um, and it seems such a mild-mannered thing, but um, yeah. wishing to not be in the trenches was obviously not what they wanted to... wasn't the word they wanted to spread back to Australia, desperate as they were for more men. I guess these days they would um, publish it and say it was fake news. <laughs> something, I don't know. Luckily for us, uh, Dennis Kevins got hold of, uh, of Paddy's words and set it to a beautiful tune. We've got the song now for you. This is for you, Chico, the Sleeper Cutters Camp. Well, my soul address at present is a battlefield in France. If it's ever going to alter, there is only just a chance To dodge the jerry rifles and shrapnel flying round Well I've burrowed like a bunny to a funk hole in the ground Where the floor is just a puddle, cause the roof lets in the damp Well I wish I was in Aussie, where the sleeper cutters camp The tea is foul and bitter, like an ancient witch's brew. The bread is sour and scanty, and you ought to see the stew. The lieutenant that is leading, he's a leery kind of coot. Oh, we always call him Mister. Plain Bill would never suit. I'd sell my chance of heaven for five minutes with that scamp. Where the Red Bulls chew a nut grass by the sleeper cutter's camp. Another war is starting, I'll hang out with the jibs There's not much in being a hero, with a bayonet between your ribs Hard fighting for the follies, pushing Huns across the Rhine They can take us ace and Flanders, and Normandy for mine All I'm needing is a posse, where the ground is not so damp If azure skies of Aussie, just a sleeper cutters can With a rifle on the knee I fancy I am back there Once again among the trees With me long lost friends I'm chatting By a campfire's ruddy glow Where we boil the old black billy In the days of long ago The signal comes to fall in I can hear the diggers tramp Farewell perhaps forever to the sleeper cutters camp farewell perhaps forever to the sleeper cutters camp uh, Dan did survive the war the song leaves you wondering just a little bit but he did and he came home and he wrote he wrote, actually wrote a song that was much more famous than that one um, Dan Sheen wrote the pub without beer he sort of specialized in fairly morbid subjects I think for that a wonderful way with words he had. We've got a one-two for you now. We've got a, a song requested. Um, well, we've got two songs requested. One of them by Samantha O'Brien and the other by Tommy. If you're out there, Tommy, this is for you. And uh, they're two pieces by the same, same poet. Um, we wrote the first tune and we'll get to the next one. Jack Sorensen is the poet we're talking about. One of the very best of the early Australian poets, early 
modern Australian poets, if you know what I mean. Um, and he wrote this piece called The Condamine Bells. And uh, we wrote this tune for this set of words. Chloe's dad actually sent us this set of words, oh, 23 years ago, 24 years ago. By so, fax, oh. by fax on a roll, you know. Yes, it was, it was too. It was on a fax, yep. there you go. And he said, oh, he thought it would make a good song, and we agreed, and this is the song we wrote. Um, we have heard Condamine Bells. Menneke's Bells are even better, they say. Ten, they used to measure them in miles, you know, six mile bell, nine mile bell. And then there was the sea bell. The sea bell. Oh, well, you had to be able to see the beast before you could hear the bell. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, but we are aware that our bell-like tune is a little, hopefully a little pretty. A little romantic. A little romantic, a little yes. Romantic. A little metaphorical. So, yeah. Yes, yes, as John would say, it's metaphorical. <laughs> that's right. Uh, John Dengue would say, that's what you yes, mean, yeah. yeah. Next week, next week, guys, could you please join us next Saturday night? It's going to be a cracker of a night. We're going to be um, celebrating the work of John Dengate. Um, an hour and a half in the company of John's fantastic words. My favourite Australian songwriter and one of my favourite people. Um, um, that'll be next Saturday night. Jack Sorensen. He was a bush worker as well, um, a shearer, became a journalist a little bit later on. He was a poet in the shearing sheds of WA and, I, and he was also a state welterweight champion boxer and he explained that, I remember he explained that uh, once when he was asked how he could 
how he learned to fight. He said, I, I had to learn to fight to um, defend, de my right defend my right to write, write poetry, poetry in the shearing sheds. Um, and it, so, yes, he worked in the shearing sheds, and this is a piece about that. Um, this one, Alan Ferguson wrote the music for this. The chorus was adapted by Wendy Evans, so a few people have had their hands in this one. Um, but again, we thank Bob Rummery because it was Bob who sent us this on a recording with Bob singing it and playing it. So, I guess like a lot of Australian songs, a lot of people get their hands on them and panel polish, beat them and polish beat, it up a bit, polish it up, and knock the rough edges off. And, but um, not that there are many rough edges on Jack Sorensen's words. He is really is one of the best. Yeah, 
yes, Lug and Wool Bales by Camel. That's an image that I just can't, can't, almost can't believe in my head, and yet there it is. Um, Dennis Mackay, that one, by the way, was another request from Sam. So I think we got all three in, Samantha. Um, I hope you enjoyed them. All three, I think, came off the same album. My voice it was still... Um, Dennis did a lovely thing for us, Dennis Mackay. He asked us for a couple of tunes that we didn't know. So we've actually learnt a couple of waltzes. Um, the first one we should have really known. I've sort of known of it, but I haven't... We've never learnt it. And it's Bill Cooper's Merry-Go-Round Waltz. Bill Cooper came from very close to us. Bill was just out at Forbes. And, um, might have been in Parks, I think. But anyway, just very close to us here in Millthorpe. Don't get those two mixed up. Uh, no, I <laughs> know. <laughs> the closer you get to Forbes and Parks, the more important it is that you don't mix them up. You know how that works. Fairly parochial. Um, and it's a beautiful tune that I believe that Bill actually learnt from a merry-go-round. Um, you do what you can with the bit that you've got. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, a, it's a lovely thing. And the second tune? Oh, Laurie Cobley's Cattle Lullaby. And it's a circular tune that just goes round and round. And I can imagine someone wandering out there at night round the cattle, humming to them, keeping them, keeping them sleepy. Yeah, it's just beautiful. Um, folks, we're not very good at seeing your comments as they come up. I, no, but we are actually really pleasing to know when they do come up because it sort of gives us, we at least know you're out there, you know. And what we've been <laughs> in the habit of doing is looking at the comments afterwards, which is really good fun. There's been some nice discussions about songs and things. So please do comment if you've got something to say. Don't think we're being rude by not saying anything now. We'll, we'll look at them later. Um, and... Um, and thank you to, I've noticed a couple of people already been on there buying albums and donating. I really appreciate that. For, just to repeat ourselves, this, this is, these concerts are free, as are the isolation tapes. Um, please enjoy them. Um, uh, we don't care if you intend to pay or if you can't pay. Enjoy them, absolutely. But if you can donate, it really helps a lot.
Thanks, Dennis, one. for a couple of beauties. We'll keep those, <laughs> um, we'll, and we'll keep keep them in the repertoire. I mean, they're lovely, Dennis. So thanks for the tip on those two tunes. We've got time for one more, and it's a request for Shane, Shane Collis, for Morton Bay. Um, and we could think of no better way to end a, a night like this than Morton Bay. We didn't just swing. Do you want to sneak it in? Have we got time? I, th I think we don't, Chloe. Right. Yeah, no, I think we'll, we might run out of time. Look, we'll see how we go. But um, we, we certainly want to get this one in for Shane. Chloe's reminded me that... that um, we had a late entry. Yes, Laurie and another person asked for Henry Lawson Sweeney. And I'll, look, if we get time, I'll, I'll do it on the end. I love doing that poem. It's one of my favourites. But Shane asked for Morton Bay a few days ago. And look, if we ended on, on Morton Bay... This would not be the first gig no, where we've ended with Morton Bay. Um, and, I, you know, Jacko Kevins has had a few mentions tonight. We lost Jacko ten years ago, now more. Ten, sorry if I got that wrong, not quite ten. No. But um, it was at the old Woodford Festival where we got to hang out with Jack a lot. And um, I certainly remember Jack singing this song here and explaining a few of the little lyric changes that have happened over the years. Um, this is the version of Morton Bay that was the only version that was actually collected in the field. It was actually found in the repertoire of a bush singer. Um, the one Sunday morning one, you know, the, that one. One Sunday morning as I was walking. was um, John Manifold's creation in the 1950s and a beautiful song it is. But um, this is Simon McDonald's Morton Bay and uh, it certainly works. <coughs> You'll have to sing along out yep, there as so. the voices go this week. <laughs> I am a native of the land of Erin. I was early banished from my native shore on the ship Columbus when circular sailing. Destination and every day must iron its way. And when I arrived, it was in Port Jackson, and I thought my days would happy be. Ah, but I found out I was greatly mistaken. I was taken prisoner to Morton Bay. Kirsten Gabby at all time places in New South Way. Now every morning as the day was dawning, as we rose from heaven fell the morning dew, and we were roused without a moment's warning. Our daily For three long years I was beastly treated And heavy irons on my legs I wore My back from flogging grew lacerated And of times painted in crimson gore Oh Morton Bay, you'll find no equal Norfolk Island, nor Kirsten Galley at all time places in New South Wales.
Egyptians or the ancient Hebrews. We were oppressed under Logan's yoke till a native black man he lay in ambush and dealt that tyrant his mortal strong. Let all free men be exhilarated that all such monsters like that might find. And, and when, when from bondage we are liberated, our former sufferings will bear in mind. Norfolk Island, nor Emu Plains At Castle Hill, or Kirsten Gabby At all time places in New South Wales Oh, Gordon Bay, you'll find no equal Norfolk Island, nor Emu Plains At Castle Hill Walkers to Gabby at all time places in New South Wales. Thanks for that request, Jane. Always happy to sing that grand song. The words, of course, come from the remarkable Frank the Poet, the convict bard. What I'll do, Chloe, is I'll just sneak around there and see how much battery we've got left. I'd love right. to be able to do the poem, but I don't want to get halfway through. You can guarantee these concerts will never go too long, because to plug in the microphone into our phone, we can ha we have to unplug the battery. So we can't charge the phone and run a concert. <laughs> so we have approximately an hour and about 30-something minutes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, very, very happy to do this for you. For Laurie, and it was actually mentioned by two people, there was... Um, Francis, Francis, I've got it, Francis and Laurie, this is for you. It was somewhere in September, and the sun was going down when I came in search of copy to a darling river town. Come and have a drink, we'll call it, tis a fitting name, I think, and twas raining for a wonder up at Come and Have a Drink. Neath the public house veranda, I was resting on a bunk when a stranger rose before me and he said that he was drunk. Uh, he apologised for speaking. Uh, there was no offence, he swore, but he somehow seemed to fancy that he'd seen my face before. No offence, he said. And I told him he needn't mention it, for I might have met him somewhere. I'd travelled round a bit and I knew a lot of fellas in the bush and in the streets, but... A fella can't remember all the fellas that he meets. They're very old and thin and dirty were the garments that he wore. Just a shirt and a pair of trousers and a boot and nothing more. And he was wringing wet and really in a sad and sinful plight. And his hat was in his left hand and a bottle in his right. His brow was broad and roomy but... The lines were somewhat harsh, and a sensual mouth was hidden by a drooping fair moustache. His hairy chest was open to what poets call the wind, and I would have bet a thousand that his pants were gone behind. Well, he agreed, you can't remember all the chaps you chanced to meet, and he said his name was Sweeney. People lived in Sussex Street. He was camping in a stable, but he swore that he was right, only for the blanky horses walking over him all night. He'd apparently been fighting, for his face was black and blue, and it looked as though the horses had been treading on him too. But an honest, genial twinkle in the eye that wasn't hurt seemed a hint of something better, in spite of drink and rags and dirt. It appeared that he mistook me for a long-lost mate of his, one of whom I was the image, both in figure and in fizz. He'd have had a letter from him if the chap were living still, for they'd carried swags together from the gulf to Broken Hill. Now Sweeney yarned a while and hinted that his folks were doing well. He told me that his father kept the Southern Cross Hotel. 
I wondered if his absence was regarded as a loss when he left the elder Sweeney, landlord of the Southern Cross. He was born in Parramatta, and he said with humour grim that he'd like to see the city, hear the liquor finished him, but he couldn't raise the money. He was damned if he could think what the government was doing. Here he offered me a drink. I declined, twas self-denial, and I lectured him on booze, using all the hackneyed arguments that preachers mostly use, things I'd heard in temperance lectures. I was young and rather green, and I ended by referring to the man he might have been. And then a wise expression struggled with the bruises on his face. Though his argument had scarcely any bearing on the case, what's the good of keeping sober? Fellas rise and fellas fall. What I might have been and wasn't doesn't trouble me at all. But he couldn't stay to argue, for his beer was nearly gone. He was glad he said to meet me and he'd see me later on. He guessed he'd have to go and get his bottle filled again and he gave a lurch and vanished in the darkness and the rain. And of afternoons in cities, when the rain is on the land, visions come to me of Sweeney with his bottle in his hand, and the stormy night behind him, and the pub veranda post, and I wonder why he haunts me more than any other ghost. Still I see the shearers drinking at the townships in the scrub, and the army praying nightly at the door of every pub, and the girls who flirt and giggle with the bushmen from the west, but the memory of Sweeney overshadows all the rest. Well, perhaps it isn't funny. There were links between us two. He had memories of the city. He had been a jackaroo. And perhaps his face forewarned me of a face that I might see from a bitter cup reflected in the wretched days to be. Oh, I suppose he's tramping somewhere where the bushmen carry swags, cadging round the wretched stations with his empty tucker bags. And I fancy that of evenings when the track is growing dim, what he might have been and wasn't comes along and troubles him. Thanks, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed tonight. I'm trying to make every Saturday as a, a, a new and different experience. Uh, next week, please join us. It'll be an hour and a half of, in the company of John Dengate, and I can, I can think of no better way to spend an hour and a half. John's songs and poems um, mm. ring very true in my heart, and I'm sure that there's a lot of fans of John's work out there. And let's try and make it a big night. It will be the uh, seventh anniversary of John's sad passing on on Saturday so we'll be toasting John and singing and, and playing his songs yes indeed grab yourself a whiskey mm -hmm. thanks folks good night <laughs>